There was a major discovery made in Europe in 1987, something called giant magnetoresistance. From 1994 to 1995, a project called the GMR Consortium was looking at where GMR could make an impact. And uh, the conclusion of that program was that uh, the biggest impact would be in a new type of magnetic memory called MRAM, Magnetic Random Access Memory. The DOD needed a new memory. The memory that was used on their satellites and on the missiles was something called plated wire memory. And the typical memory was something like 40 pounds, cost a quarter of a million dollars, and was about 128 kilobytes. And so the program started in uh, 1995 under the title Spintronics, where Spintronics stood for Spin Transport Electronics, because basically GMR and its subsequent device, which is called Spin-Dependent Tunneling, was based on spin transport through interfaces. There was another major discovery called Magnetic Tunnel Junction, and so this really put an impetus in uh, spintronics because the spin tunneling effect where the metal is replaced with an insulator was a much larger effect, in fact, by an order of magnitude. So it made the memory much more feasible than using just the GMR. So uh, MRAM technology sounds kind of uh, esoteric, um, but actually, uh, even though we don't notice it, it's in a lot of uh, things around us and a lot of things that we use every day. So uh, this kind of uh, memory is being used in, um, for example, industrial controllers, so things that control industrial equipment. It's being used in servers, computer servers that you know, run enterprise computing and internet things, in routers that, that you know, run the internet. It's being used in motorcycles and cars and airplanes. It turned out that there were some very interesting properties for spins in semiconductors. So there were two interesting experiments. One occurred in Japan, and this was the fact that magnetism could be effectively tuned with an electric field. At the same time, there was an experiment at Santa Barbara where a semiconductor was hit with a a circularly polarized laser, and a magnetic state was induced. So by hitting this material with a laser, you could make it magnetic. So those two discoveries gave me the idea that there could be a new DARPA program called SPINS. And the idea was, number one, the ability to modify magnetism at room temperature just with an electric field. And the second thing was to exploit the idea that you could in optically induce magnetism in a semiconductor. A few of the contractors realized that these spin states in the semiconductors might be useful as a qubit. The idea came up to create a multi-office program to explore a much broader view of quantum information. And so that was the genesis of a program called QUIST. And at the time, that became sort of the, the benchmark program in quantum information uh, for the government. There were new discoveries in materials that could enable another push into this memory problem about getting hard drive, non-volatile, very dense memories that is always the, the bottleneck on, on computing capabilities. And that's how I started my, my new program at DARPA, Topological Excitations in Electronics. And it came about because of the realization that topology offers a new tuning capability on magnetic materials to improve upon what we have been able to achieve for memory applications. So that means that if now you can accomplish this material, you can really make them very small, smaller than what those bits of information were we were able to, to keep uh, stable in the hard drives, and we can actually uh, drive them to be either memory, logic, any kind of you know, information device uh, based upon a magnetic material could be based on this with a much smaller, which means denser, thermally stable 
entity. We are very interested in uh, going beyond this, which is qubits. This is when you store more than one and a zero. This is the quantum bit of information. That is the future of quantum computing. <laughs>